Hi friends, this is the reading lesson for third grade. We are going to read a story today called From Phonograph to Playlist. And this is a similar type of story that we read um, last week about the telephone, from telephone to FaceTime. So we're just going to um, read and discuss how music has changed throughout the years um, after Edison's um, invention. So. You need, your booklet's open to page 22. You need a pencil and you also need a highlighter. We are going to be um, highlighting key details as we read and then we will write three main ideas today and a few more tomorrow. So if you are ready, we will go ahead and get started. Extended read two. Remember to annotate as you read. From phonograph, to Playlist by Ben Foster Music is the universal language of mankind. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, poet Music has always played an important role in people's lives. It can express feelings. It can tell stories. It can lift moods. Music can even give people more energy. Long ago, people had to go to concerts to hear music. There was no other way to hear music unless it was at a live performance. Today's technology helps people play and listen to music anywhere. They can listen to music while driving a car, sitting on a beach, or flying in an airplane. Astronauts play music and even make their own music in space. One invention started the modern music business. It was the phonograph. This amazing invention has led to many others. People can now make music part of their lives anywhere, anytime. All right, so let's go ahead and stop right there, and we'll do some highlighting. If you did some highlighting on your own, that is great. Um, so when I first read this story, I found it to be so interesting that long ago, the only way people could hear music was at a live performance. Can you imagine so we should probably highlight that. Okay, but now, today, people can listen to music anywhere, right? So we should probably highlight that in paragraph two. And we can highlight the different things that they can do. Driving a car, sitting on the beach, or flying in an airplane. Those are three very different things. And we can also highlight that astronauts make their own music and play music in space. Wow, fascinating. Now, this would not be possible if we did not have the invention of the phonograph. It started listening to music. It allowed people to listen to music, and now people listen to music all the time. I don't know about you guys, but in my house, we always have music on. We love listening to music. The kids love listening to music. So we are super grateful for this modern music. Okay, so we should highlight modern music, and we'll highlight the phonograph. And this, we should also highlight that it led to many other inventions. Okay, we're gonna start, we're gonna read paragraphs four through seven. Um, I want you to try and highlight as you read. You guys are getting to the point in the year where you definitely need to be highlighting on your own. I will always go back and recheck with you and then you can add some highlights if you would like. So let's go ahead and keep going. Phonograph. The word phonograph means writing sound in Greek. It is the perfect word to describe how early recordings worked. The early machine recorded sounds with a needle onto a cylinder covered in foil. The machine wrote the sounds. The sounds could then be played back again. Thomas Edison developed the phonograph in 1877. It opened up a new world for music lovers. Edison was quite proud of his new invention. He showed it to the staff of Scientific American magazine in New York. The December issue read, Mr. Thomas A. Edison recently came into this office, placed a little machine on our desk, turned a crank, and the machine inquired as to our health, asked how we liked the phonograph, informed us that it was very well, and bid us a cordial good night. 
newspapers and magazines reported this story. Interest in Edison's invention soared. Edison's original tin foil phonograph invented in the autumn of 1877. All right, so let's start by talking about this picture. This was the phonograph that he invented, the original one. That is a music playing device. What in the world? That looks so different than what we have now. I mean, we can play music on our phone. Look how big that thing is, right? Okay, so let's go back into paragraphs four and five before we continue reading and we'll do some highlighting. So, we, I liked the fact that the word phonograph in means writing sound in Greek. That kind of reminds me that this is a sound machine, okay? Um, it says that the early machine recorded sounds with needle onto a cylinder covered in foil. So that was this one right here. And then the sounds could be played back. So then it says in 1877 is when the phonograph was developed. It, um, it says it opened a new world for music lovers. And he was really proud, as he should be, right? Okay, so um, this we're not going to highlight in this quote. If you did, it just kind of explains a little bit about um, his invention and then it started saying that interest in Edison's invention soared. So now people were really interested in it. All right, let's turn the page. Thomas Edison believed that everyone in America would want to have a phonograph machine. They would buy and listen to music in their homes. Unfortunately, the tinfoil did not last long, so the music could be played only a few times. Edison knew his phonograph needed improvement. At the time, he was also busy trying to invent a better light bulb. While Edison worked on the light bulb, other inventors, such as Alexander Graham Bell and Charles Sumner Tainter, improved Edison's phonograph. They replaced foil cylinders with cylinders made of wax. These made the sound much clearer. Once Edison finished his work on the light bulb, he got back to improving the phonograph. First, he switched to wax cylinders. He used a thicker, harder wax. This made it possible to play the cylinder over 100 times. Then Edison figured out a way to produce a lot of cylinders at one time. He developed a mold from a master cylinder. Then he used that one mold to produce more than 100 cylinders every day. Many records of the same music could now be sold. These cylinders were less expensive, so more people could afford to buy them. All right, so we know that Thomas Edison was really proud of his invention, but unfortunately, people didn't end up buying tons and tons of these because the tinfoil didn't last very long, right? So it was kind of like a waste. So we should probably highlight that. And he knew that it needed improvement. But at the same time, he was also busy with other inventions, right? So people such as Alexander Graham Bell and Charles Summer Tainter improved this phonograph. So that's probably important to highlight. They replaced foil cylinders with cylinders made of wax which made the sound much clearer, and then obviously it would last longer than the tin foil, right? Um, but once Edison finished with his light bulb, he went back to the phonograph. He switched to the wax cylinders, just like they had thought of, and so we should probably highlight that. And then it says he used a thicker, harder wax, which made it possible for the cylinder to play over 100 times. So that's much better than just the few, right? He then was able to produce many cylinders at one time. So this one mold to make one cylinder would actually last for 100 cylinders every day. So this was a huge, huge improvement. 
So it says he used that one mold to produce more than 100 cylinders every day. So now the cylinders were less expensive, so more people could start to buy these machines. And they lasted longer, so people were more interested. All right, we are going to read two more paragraphs, and then we'll go back and write our main ideas. The Gramophone Edison and other inventors continued to improve the wax cylinder. In the late 1880s, Emil Berliner, another inventor, developed a new type of record. Instead of cylinders, he used flat disks to record sound. First, sound was recorded onto a wax disk. This disk was used to make a metal master copy of the recording. It was easier to make copies of it because of its flat design. Hundreds of copies could be made from the master. They were stamped out of a machine. The quality of the sound was much better on discs than on the wax cylinders. All right, so the gramophone, right? And um, Emil Berliner um, uh, developed a new way to record. So we should probably highlight late 1880s and highlight their name. And instead of cylinders like people have been using, he used flat discs to record the sound. It made them sound much better, and it was easier to make copies because it was flat, right? So let's go ahead and highlight that. It was easier to make copies of it because of its flat design. Hundreds of copies could be made, and then um, the quality was also much better. The quality of sound was much better on the discs and the wax cylinders. All right, we have one more paragraph to read about the gramophone. The first discs were made of rubber. Later, these discs would be made of vinyl. People played their discs on a new device called a gramophone. The horn of the gramophone amplified the recorded sound. It was developed by Berliner and was similar to Edison's phonograph. People bought gramophones and phonographs to play all the recordings now available to them. Everyone could listen to the same marching band or singer perform the same music. It was the beginning of the recording business we know today. All right, so we know that the first these discs were made of rubber, but then later they would be made of vinyl, okay? And they would listen to their discs on the new device called the gramophone. The horn of the gramophone amplified the sound, so made it sound louder and better. Um, but this all goes back to the beginning of the phonograph, right? If we did not have the phonograph, we would not have the gramophone. And what was so cool about this is that people could listen to the same marching band or singer perform the same music. And it says it was the beginning of the recording business as we know today. So all of this is we are thankful for it or else we wouldn't have exactly what we have today, which is able to listen to music anytime we want. All right, so let's go ahead and actually we should probably highlight that it was developed by Berliner and was similar to the phonograph. Okay, so let's put our highlighters down and let's grab our pencils and we are going to write some main ideas. So we're gonna go all the way back to the first page. We are gonna write our first main idea on page 22. All right, so back in this introduction section, paragraphs one through three, um, we know that music has come a long way. And because of inventions and technology, people can listen to music anytime, anywhere. That's probably the biggest thing that we um, should talk about in this first introduction paragraph. So 
Let's start with inventions and technology. made it possible for people to listen to music. Oops. Anytime and any All right, so that kind of just tells us that we're going to discuss where we started and where we are going. Okay, now we're going to write a main idea about the phonograph. So this was the early invention. And we can talk about um, how Edison began with his phonograph and then kind of where he ended up. Okay, so Edison's phonograph started with foil cylinders, right? Which developed into wax cylinders and then remember they had that mold that could make a bunch of different cylinders per day with a mold that could reproduce so make again more than 100 cylinders per day. So this is a huge achievement, right? He went to making them out of foil that didn't last very long to making them out of wax, thanks to Alexander Graham Bell and somebody else. <laughs> and Charles Sumner Tainter. And then he was able to make it so they could reproduce these wax cylinders and use the same mold. Pretty fascinating, right? All right. Now we're going to write one more main idea about the gramophone. And the gramophone was um, had that big megaphone part to it, and it amplified the sound, right? So we know that Let's see, how do we want to say this? Emil Berliner invented the gramophone, which, whoops, used vinyl. Actually, so which used, whoops, vinyl discs to play music, right? That pretty much says what we highlighted. So Emilia, Emil Berliner invented the gramophone, which used vinyl discs to play music. And we might want to add before vinyl discs were used, the discs were made out of, and I want you to finish the sentence. So go ahead, finish that sentence. If you're in Mrs. Peter's class, Mrs. Peterson's class, you're going to read me your entire main idea on Canvas. If you're in Mrs. Smith's class, you may or may not do this. All right, so go ahead, fill in that blank. What were the discs made out of before they were made out of vinyl? And then you are done for the day. Great job, friends. We'll see you later.